Well, today brings the curtain down on the long and illustrious riding career of Dave Cross, who's with me now. He has um, broken boundaries for jockeys for, for more than one reason, which we'll come to in a minute. But how do you feel today? You've just, you've just ridden your, your last ride here. You're, you're in one piece. Are you happy you've made the decision? Uh, delighted, um, to be honest. Time was right for me um, to finish up. Um, I kind of decided probably a few months ago that you know this was going to be my last season. Um, I was very busy through November, busy all this month and racing every day and things, just opportunities on better types of horses were becoming fewer and fewer and I've got other things going on now as well and uh, my wife Rebecca is expecting a child in five or six weeks and timing is just perfect for her. I could have a little bit of a break, not that I'm one to rest in my laurels too much and um, enjoy uh, the birth of our child and um, and uh, then the hospitality business will be back and I'll be booming on from there. Yeah, the stars have all aligned really, haven't they, for the decision to come at this time. Just take me back to when it started, when you came here and, and, and your first few first few months and years in the UK. Yeah, I came over, never forget it, came over, I think around um, Easter time for a week to Charlie Mann on a trial. I was, I was in Willie Mullins's and I was very ambitious, went there thinking I'll be number one and never ridden in a race in my life. And I think there was... Ruby Walsh had just turned professional and uh, there was, I think, 16 licensed jockeys in the yard. <laughs> and uh, so opportunities weren't going to come too easily there. And um, a friend of mine, Gavin Rag, who lived down the road from me, um, he used to come over here, ride as business amateur. He's good friends with Charlie Mann, Kevin O'Ryan, who works for you guys. Um, he had just left back, uh, gone back from Charlie Mann's back to home to Ireland and uh, there was an opportunity to be amateur went into Charlie Mann's office and um, after a week's trial and I'm Charlie this, Charlie that, Charlie everything. And then when I turned to walk um, out of the room and uh, he said, hold on there for a second, Crossy. He said, have a look at that picture there. He said, when you ride as many winners as him, you can call me Charlie, but until then, <laughs> call me governor. And to be fair, I, I did I did as well. And it's, it's the old school way of being brought up. And, um, and I like to think, you know, throughout my career, I've acted professionally call Charlie Mann governor for 10 years and um, I call him Charlie now by the way but uh, no it's 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 been great great so you owe him an awful lot who else has yeah. helped you along the way um, well all the jockeys that were in Charlie Mann's um, at the time Noel Feely um, I'll come on to doctors in a second but Charlie Charlie was a great boss um, we had a great time back in the days um, Noel met his wife Natasha there we had Stevie Crane we had loads of good young lads coming up kind of after myself and Noel and the crack we used to have was 24 seven, you know, they were definitely the best days of your life. And I even had a message from a fella, I won't tell you what I christened him as a nickname, but sent me a message today. And he said, um, geez, you had a great career. And I didn't realize at the time when we were in Charlie's, the crack we used to have and the opportunities you took every one. And it was a really nice message now. And then signed off with the nickname I gave him. He says, the whole village used to call me this nickname and it's not repeatable. But, um, you know, they, they, were, they were great days, you know. And, um, and I said to someone in the racing post, you know, we used to, there was no Sunday racing. We'd go out on a Saturday night, uh, all day Sunday, Sunday night in the mall. We'd all turn up at Plumpton on a Monday. 10 naked lads inside in the sauna chatting about who they were with and whatever we were all single back then and you know it was great 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 all days they were great all days uh, you mentioned Noel Feely and you are sporting the Noel Feely racing livery so he and you will not forgive me if I don't ask you about this venture which is proving pretty successful yeah um, when Noel retired um, in this game like when you when you give up Pete you're soon forgotten about uh, I'll be yesterday's uh, toilet paper tomorrow um, as such. But um, I said to Noel, perhaps we might do something together. And we met up with a fella called Mark Ball, who used to mm -hmm. run Let's Live Racing. And um, he kind of gave us the formula to go with the syndicate business. Then we went to our accountant, Brooke Alder. He said, under no circumstances, do it. <laughs> and then when I get told not to do something, um, I put my head down, ears back, and I go head, head first into it. And um, we've built up the team of 13 horses now and uh, we're having great success and we're we're ready to build it even far, further you know we want to make sure owners have fun and um, we keep them well informed with everything like Noel was here today with the horse I rode he didn't run great he had an issue but um, you know we want to keep them well informed and make it good fun the whole way you know now more importantly many years ago people told you you shouldn't be riding horses and that's because you were diagnosed <coughs> as a diabetic and you have completely transformed the landscape for jockeys who may be diabetic in future just tell me how that happened 
Um, I remember going racing uh, to Cartmel years ago and the whole way up, I, I, the weeks leading up to it, I was so light. I was always 10 stone, three, four. I went down to about nine stone, seven, nine, five, something like that. And up at Catrick that day, I was doing 10 stone. And I was bragging that I didn't have to sweat, but I was, excuse the expression, but peeing like a racehorse because mm. um, my levels were so high. So it's you can use it as a diuretic as such. And um, I was peeing a lot and um, I was going out with a girl at the time. Um, actually, I remember coming home from racing that day, Andrew Tinkler, we had to stop the car about 10 times. And so much so that we got down the A417 heading into Swindon and Tinkler said, you're taking the piss crossy. Um, you were. But, but literally, I, I was that desperate. Anyway, got home that night and the girl from the time said her mother was a nurse. And she said, oh, you could be a diabetic because she said the symptoms to her. And... Um, and I flew back home to Ireland. I forget why I was going back. And I just said to my dad, he picked me up from the airport. Um, Let's just stop it off at the doctors. Went into doctors and he, I literally had an ambulance straight to hospital. I remember being down in hospital and I was just telling people that over here or whatever, didn't think it was a big deal and all that. And um, Philip Pritchard, uh, who looked after me amongst a number of other jo- jockeys, we had a chat and um, jockeys couldn't ride as diabetic at the time. and. He, Phillips managed me, made sure I saw all the correct people, specialists, um, and I had to I had to keep it a secret and things. And then I remember as down in, when it when it did come out, uh, it was an ominous letter sent into the race and post. And um, I remember I was at home doing a coaching lesson that evening, and Jerry Hill said to me, uh, rang me up, and I'm he left a message, and I listened to the message while I was giving the coaching lesson. I rang Doc Pritchard, and I said, "Oh, the game is up." and to be fair, I when I rang Jerry back and I just told him straight out there was no point in in hiding Anton anymore and he didn't stop me one day riding. That man is I owe him a lot. He changed the rules and um, slapped me with a two hundred and fifty pound fine, which the BHA had to do was basically a slap on the wrists and um, yeah, and I've been riding away since. I think there are a lot of people in this sport who owe him an awful lot this year, but it's a it's a, a great testament to to his, his kindness to you and, and, and thank you, Dave, for everything you've done for, for everybody down the years. I wish you all the best with your with your new family over, over the next few years. Yeah, really looking forward to it now. Onwards and upwards, no regrets, and uh, I've had a great career. Top man, thanks so much. Cheers, guys. Well done.